The Cube's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies, creating technologies that drive human progress. We're back, this is Dave Vellante for our live coverage of MWC 23, Silicon Angle's wall-to-wall, four-day coverage. We're here with Greg Manganello, who's from Fujitsu. He's the global head of network services business unit at the company, and Ryan McMenamin is the director of product management for the o open telecom ecosystem. We've been talking about that all week, how this ecosystem has opened up. Ryan's with Dell Technologies. Gents, welcome to theCUBE. Thank, Thank you, Dave. Dave. So Good Greg, to be here. Greg, thanks for coming on. Let's, let's hear Fujitsu's story. We haven't heard much at this event from Fujitsu. I'm sure you got a big presence, but welcome to theCUBE. Right, thanks. Tell us your angle. Thanks very much. So uh, Fujitsu, we're big ORAN advocates, open radio access network advocates. We're one of the leading uh, founders of that uh, open standard. We're also members of the Open RAN Policy Coalition. I'm a board member there. Um, we're kind of all in on Open RAN. The reason is it gives operators choices and much more vendor diversity and therefore a lot of innovation when they build out their 5G networks. And so that's an entry point for Dell as well. I mean obviously you guys make a lot of hay with servers and storage and, and other sort of hardware, but ORAN is just this disruptive change to this industry. So, but it's also compute intensive. Sure. So from Dell's perspective, what are the challenges of, of, of getting customers to carriers to adopt ORAN? How do you de-risk it for them? Right, I mean, ORAN really needs to be seen as a choice, right? And that choice comes with building out an ecosystem of partners. Right? Working with people like Fujitsu and others helps us build systems that the carriers can rely upon. Otherwise, it looks like another science experiment, a sandbox, and it's a really anything but that. So what specifically are you guys doing together? Are you doing integrations, reference architectures, engineered systems, all of the above? Yeah, so I think it's a little bit of all of the above. Uh, so we've announced our cooperation, so the engineering teams are linked, and that we're combining our both sweet spots together from uh, Fujitsu's virtual CUDU and our open RAN radios and Dell's platforms and integration capabilities, and together we're offering a pre-integrated bundle to operators to reduce that risk and kind of help the, uh, help the uh, overcome some of the uh, startup obstacles by shrinking the integration costs. So you got Greenfield customers, that's pretty straightforward, white sheet of paper, go, go disrupt, you know, drive. And then there's traditional carriers, got 4G and 5G networks, it's sort of, you know, hybrid, if you will, and, they, and, they, and this integration there. Where do you see the action now? I presume it's, it's Greenfield today, but isn't it inevitable that the traditional carriers have to go open? It is a, a couple of different ways that they need to go and they want to go. It might be power consumption. It might be the cloudification of their network. They're going to have different reasons for doing it and I think we have to make sure that when we work on collaborations like we do with Fujitsu, we have to look at all of those vectors. What is it that somebody maybe here in Europe is dealing with high gas prices, high energy prices, in the US or wherever it's expansion? There are going to be different justifications for it. Yeah, so power must be an increasing component of the operating expense, you know, with energy costs up, and it's a power hungry environment. So how does, how does Open RAN solve that problem? So that's a great question. So, um, by working together, we can really optimize the configurations. So on the Fujitsu side, our radios are multi-band and highly compact and super energy efficient so that the uh, TCO for the carriers is uh, much, much lower. And then we've also announced um, on the R app side, power savings, uh, energy savings applications, which are really sophisticated AI-enabled apps that can switch off the radio based upon traffic prediction models, and we can save the operator 30% on their energy bill. That's a, that's a big number. And that, that intelligence, so that lives in the, does it live in the RIC? Is it uh, in, in the, the app brain? right above the, the app right above the, the RIC, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a purpose-built app to deal with that it's a multi-vendor app, it can sit on anybody's, anybody's ORAN system, and one of the beauties of ORAN is there is that open architecture so that even if uh, Dell and Fujitsu only sell part of the, or none of the system, an app can be selected from any vendor, including Fujitsu. So that's, that's one of the benefits of whoever's got the best idea 
the best cost performance, the best uh, uh, energy performance, customers can really be enabled to make the choice and continue to make choices, not just way back at RFP time, but throughout their life cycle, they can keep making choices. And so that's really uh, meaning that, hey, if we miss the buying cycle, then we're closed out for five or 10 years. No, it's constantly being reevaluated, and that's really going to, that's really exciting the whole ecosystem. But what we really want to do is make sure we partner together with key partners, Dell and Fujitsu, such that the customer, when they do select us, they see a bundle, not just every person for themselves. It de-risks it, and we get a lot of that integration headache out of the way before we launch it. I think that's what's different. We've been talking about how, you know, we've kind of seen this movie before in the 90s. We saw the move from the mainframe, vertical stack to the horizontal stack. We talked about that, but there are real differences because back then you had, I don't know, five components of the stack and there was no integration. And then even converged infrastructure was kind of bolts that brought that together. And then over time it's become, you know, engineered systems. When you talk to customers, Brian, is it, is the conversation today mostly TCO? Is it how to get the reliability and quality of service of, of, of traditional stacks? Where's the conversation today? Yeah, it's the flip side of choice, which is how do you make sure you have that reliability and that security to ensure that the full stack isn't just integrated, but it lives through that whole life cycle management. What are, if you're bringing in another piece in our app or an X app, how do you actually make sure that it works together as a group? Because if you don't have that kind of assurance, how can you actually guarantee that ORAN in and of itself is going to perform better than a traditional RAN system? So come, overcoming that barrier requires partnerships and integration activity. That is an investment on the parts of our companies, but also the operators need to look back at us and say, yeah, that work has been done and I trust, as trusted advisors for the operators, that that's been done and then we can go validate it. Help our audience understand at what point in time do you feel that from a TCO perspective there'll be parity or it doesn't even, in my opinion, it doesn't even have to be equal. It has to be close enough and I don't know what that close enough is because the other benefits of openness, the innovation. So there, there's that piece of it is the cost piece and, and, and then there is the reliability and I would say the same thing, it's got to be well, maybe not. Maybe good enough is not good enough in this world, but maybe it is for some use cases. So, really my question is around adoption and what are those factors that are going to affect adoption and when can we expect them it's, to it's be? A, it's, a good, it's a good question, uh, Dave, and I, what I would say is that, um, that the, the closed RAN vendors are making incremental improvements and if you think in a snapshot, there might be one answer, but if you think in kind of a flow model, a river, over time, our ORAN, uh, like-minded people are on a monster innovation curve. I mean, the slope of the curve is huge. So, um, in the Open RAN Policy Coalition, 60 like-minded uh, companies working together going north, and we're saying that uh, let's bring all the innovation together. So you can say TCO, reliability, but we're bringing the innovation curve of software, an integration curve from silicon, an integration from system vendors, all together to really to really uh, out innovate everybody else by working together. So that's the I like that's that the curve model. analogy, Greg. So, okay, you got the O guive or S curve, and you're saying that O ran is you know entering or you know maybe even before the steep part of the S curve. Right. So you're going to go hyperbolic, whereas the traditional vendors are maybe trying to squeeze a little bit more One, out of the lemon. One two percent, and we're making thirty percent or more quantum leaps at a time every time innovation. So. So, you know, what we tell customers is, you know, you can measure right now, but if you just do the time-based competition model, you know, as an organization, as a group of us, we're going to be ahead. Is it, is it a Moore's Law innovation curve, or is it actually faster because you've got the combinatorial factors of, of silicon, certain telco technologies, you know, uh, other integration software? Is it actually steeper than maybe historical Moore's I Law? I think it's steeper, I don't know uh, Ryan's opinion, but I think it's steeper because you know, Moore's Law, well known in silicon, and it's reaching you know, five nanometers and more and more innovations, but now we're talking about AI software and machine learning, as well as the, you know, the system and device vendors, so when all that's combined, you know, what is that? So that's, that's why I think we're at an ORAN conference today, I'm not sure we're at MWC. Well, it's, tr it's true, <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny, they changed the name, from Mobile World Congress, and that was never really meant to be a consumer show, but these things changed that. 
right? And so I, I think it's appropriate MWC because we're seeing really deep enterprise technology now enter, so that's kind of, that's your sweet spot, isn't it? It really is, and, but I think in some ways it, it's the path to that price performance parity which we saw in, in IT a long time ago making its way into telecom is there, but it doesn't work unless everybody is on board, and that involves players like this and, play, and, and even smaller companies and innovative startups, which we really haven't seen in this space for some time. And we've been having them at the Dell booth all week long, and there's really interesting stuff, like Greg said, AI, ML, optimization, and efficiency, which is exciting, and that's where ORAN can also benefit the industry. And as I say, there are, there are other differences to your advantage. You've got you know, engineer systems, or, or you've, you've been through that, in, in enterprise IT, kind of learn how to do that. But you've also got the cloud, public cloud for experimentation, mm -hmm. so you can fail cheaply, and you got AI, right? Which is, you know, really didn't have AI in the 90s, you had it, but nobody used it. And now you're like, everybody's using ChatGPT. Right, you know, and, so. but now what's exciting, and the other thing that Ryan and uh, we are working on together is uh, linking our labs together because it's not about the first time system integration and connecting the hoses together and okay, there it worked, but it's about the ongoing life cycle management of all the updates and upgrades and by using uh, Dell's Otel lab and Fujitsu's MITC lab and linking them together, now we really have a way of giving operators confidence that as we bring out the new innovations, it's battle tested by two organizations and so two logos coming together and saying, you know, we've looked at it from our different angles and then this is battle tested, it, there's a lot of value there. I think the labs are key. But it's interesting, you know, the point there is by tying labs together, there's an, there's an acknowledged skills gap as we move into this ORAN world that, that operators are looking to us and probably Fujitsu saying, help our team understand how to thrive in this new environment because we're going from closed systems to open systems where they actually, again, have more choice and more ability to be flexible. Yeah, if you could take away that plumbing, even though they're good plumbers, all right, guys, we've got to go. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank Cube. you much. Great to have you. Appreciate it, Dave. Okay, keep it right there. Dave Vellante, Lisa Martin, and Dave Nicholson will be back from the FIRA in Barcelona on theCUBE. Keep it right there. Mm -hmm.